All right, this is your brother Aisha Yar coming at you with another lesson. First off, I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles of the great millstone, which I learned is true from. Honors to the elders and brothers out there pushing this word through the four corners of the earth within truth and sincerity. And Shalom to the Aqua that's listening and learning. Today's video is going to be entitled Yahweh Shai Kingdom Vibes. I got inspired to do this lesson because of the brother Zebulon Warrior. Uh, he shared this on uh, social media. And, you know, all the brothers, you know, and everybody that saw the picture, everybody was saying this is a heavy picture. This is what we're looking for. This is what we're fighting for. This is what we can't wait for. And all of that is true, man. You know, this like, like they say in the world, a picture says a thousand words. Man, this picture says more than that, man. You know, this picture says forever. This picture says peace, you know, and this is what we're fighting for, man, because we know that we this is our future. All right. We know that we have something greater coming for us. And this is one of the reasons why we grind so hard to push this word, because we want you. How about Shem Yahweh Shai to look at us to be the first fruits of the kingdom, man. And then, like I said, this is a powerful picture of of his of his own because you see his uh, uh malak you know a young king right there you know it looks like he's getting ready to get out of his chariot you know you just look at the chariot vibes all around him and everything like that got the crown on and as soon as he opens the door to the chariot you see this big palace this beautiful lit up palace in the background with all of these look like mountains and you know the, the beautiful colored skies and everything like that this is what we we fighting for man this is what we want this is what we need all right you could just imagine you know getting out of a chariot and you just getting ready to just live life man you just getting ready to live life and this is why we keep telling you so-called negroes latinos and native americans to get right because there's more than life than what you're living right now man there's way more than life than what you're living right now man the scriptures say that the most size uh universe has many mansions planets man that he's gonna give us and that's just that's just a lot to think of on his own man you know right now all we know is earth and we don't even know earth that well man we don't even know earth that well because we weren't able to experience it like a lot of other people in this world man a lot of us you know all of israel's under the curses but the majority of us are not rich the majority of us, the majority salakia of us can't travel and do certain things like that man because a lot of us are like i said we under the curses man like the scriptures say man we make money and to put it in the bags filled with holes we got all these bills taxes families <laughs> you know essentials everything that we got to take care of man so we can't live we can't experience earth the way that the lord wanted us to man because we went off against his commandments statutes and laws but as it says right here at the top, Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, Ratazah, meaning Lord willing, this is our future, man. This is our future. We want to make it the first time around, man. You know, we get vexed every single day, you know, while we're living here and everything like that, man. And, you know, we deal with it. Because as the scriptures say, man, we're supposed to endure hardness as a good soldier. All right. So, like I said, I want to get into this picture because it says a lot, man. And this is what we're waiting for, man. You know, we don't have this picture right here. Let us know that once we open those doors, as you see from the chariot, man, we're going to be all right. We're going to be all right. So let's get um, let's start off with Isaiah, Isaiah 32 and 16. This is Isaiah chapter 32, verse 16. And it says, then judgment shall dwell in the wilderness and righteousness remain in a fruitful field and the work of righteousness shall be peace and the effect of righteousness quietness and assurance forever and my people shall dwell in a peaceable habitation and in sure dwellings and in quiet resting places see quiet resting places as the scriptures say right now salakia this is not our rest but in the kingdom that will be our rest and we're going to have peace man you know right now we're not we, we, we don't we don't have peace you know if you want to talk about peace you can talk about peace on all kind of levels you can talk about peace as far as how loud our people are in public 
the chaos that's going on in the streets the uh idiocy that's among all kinds of people there's no peace man riots you know us having an evil eye toward our own people our own brothers and sisters there's no peace man but in the kingdom there will be peace it says sure dwellings man sure we're going to be in complete safety we're going to love each other man yahweh shah is going to make sure everything is ran according to the way that it's supposed to be you know everybody's just going to be at peace man everybody's going to be happy and this is what we want man this is what we're fighting for right now all right and the work of righteousness shall be peace our work of righteousness right now does bring us peace man because it gives us hope we do this work because we feel if we keep if, if we keep doing this and continue within this faith yahweh bashim yahweh shah will bring us into the first round of peace man and when we do read these scriptures we do have peace you know this is our comforter right here all right this is what keeps us stable this is what keeps us sane man you know these scriptures if we didn't have these scriptures man we'll we'll <laughs> we'll lose it <laughs> we'll lose it but right now man you know we're doing what we're supposed to do so we can main um we can we can we can be calm man we can stay calm and just keep moving you know because we know that something great is going to happen to us man on a on a <laughs> super high level uh scale man so let's get 30 psalms 37 and 10 this is psalms 37 and 10 and it says for yet a little while and the wicked shall not be yeah thou shalt diligently consider his place and it shall not be but the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace so there it is again the meek shall inherit the earth who's the meek the israelites starting with the elect man we're gonna inherit the earth that picture shows you a quick glimpse of us inheriting the earth, man. You know, taking back what's ours. Because that's exactly what's going to happen, man. As soon as Esau goes down, man, we're taking back what's ours. We're taking our land back. We're going to take back the earth. We're going to make sure the earth is ran properly. It's going to have the land Sabbath. All of the fruits and vegetables and flowers and trees and gardens and jungles, forests everything man everything is gonna look beautiful man everything is gonna flourish all right everything is gonna look the way it's supposed to everything everything is gonna grow to its full potential have its full strength we're gonna have our full strength we're gonna be in new bodies man we're gonna be able to drink water that actually has a taste to it and it's gonna actually help us it's like it's a, a article going around right now where all of the bad water that's that's around here man even the ones that so-called purified the purified water is, is messing people up you know <laughs> they give you they be uh telling you these lies and everything talking about yeah if you get the purified waters from this and that is way better than of course drinking out of the sink or getting other brands of water or whatever the case may be but we all know that all of this food and liquids or whatever is tainted it's polluted it's not good for us man you know the most i made ezekiel eat their bread with dung you know, that represented what we was going to eat right now. Because that's exactly what we're eating. We're eating the foul bread, man. That's not going to be in the kingdom. You know, we're going to have actual food that we're going to enjoy, man. It's going to taste real. You know, right now, man, we don't even know what real food tastes like. And that's a shame. All we know is chemical this, chemical that, process this, process, process that, GMO this, GMO that. You know, we don't even know what clean air feels like anything man that's not gonna be in the kingdom you know and that's what we waiting for man we waiting for fresh air because that's what the kingdom is gonna be it's gonna be a breath of fresh air man it's gonna be a really really good sigh man a relief as soon as you realize you're gonna on the chariot like you say you're gonna go, ah, you know <laughs> it's over it's over let's listen to this peaceful music Let's listen to our Lord, Yahweh Shai. Pray to Yahweh. You know, pray to Yahweh by Shem, Yahweh Shai, Salakia. You know, and let's do according to what the scriptures say, man. Follow commandments, statutes, and laws, and be happy, man. All right. Let's get Isaiah again. Let's get Isaiah. Um, let's get Isaiah 11 and 4. This is Isaiah chapter 11, verse 4. It says, But with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. And righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins, 
and faithfulness the girdle of his rings. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid. And the calf and the young lion and the family together, and the little child shall lead them. And the cow and the bear shall feed, their young ones shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. And the sucking child shall play on the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the cockatrice den. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. This is, let's read this real quick too. And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people, to it shall the Gentiles seek, seek, and his rest shall be glorious. So at the end of the day, man, this is what, how beautiful things are going to be, man. The wolf is going to dwell with the lamb. <laughs> If a wolf was around uh, lamb, sheep right now, man, he'll get ready to, you know, devour him, man. You know, eat him. The leopard shall lie down with the kid. That's saying a lot. A young child, man, two, three years old, is going to be able to be around leopards, man. And you want to know why? Because we're going to be in those new bodies. The fear of the animals is going to come, come back on the uh, beast of the, of the earth, man. They're going to fear us again. They're going to know who the Israelites are. All right. And the calf and the young lion, the family together, and a little child shall lead them. We're going to have young kings, man. Young kings giving orders. As soon as they uh, grow old enough to have understanding, man, they're going to be able to rule. Just like we always push, you know, you, you're a grown man and a grown woman around the age of 12. Young, man. Very young. All right? And they're going to be leading, man. They, they're going to be, you know... Putting their slaves in order, putting their service in order, their handmaids in order. You know, they're going to have families that they're going to love at very young ages, man. This world pushes that you can't do any of these things until you're 18. As soon as you're 18, then you're able to go out and drink. You're able to go out and live a life as a so-called adult. But in the scriptures, you know, it's a com it's completely different. It's complete difference, man. The most I understand is that once you're done with puberty, man, you you are pretty much you're grown, man. You're able to understand these things. And this is well known within this kingdom, this wicked kingdom. It's all kind of people that graduated from college at the age of 12, 13 years old, man. And people call them super geniuses or whatever. It ain't because they're super geniuses. Don't get me wrong. They're very smart, have a lot of wisdom. But. People don't understand that you're able to inherit a lot of wisdom and understanding at a young age, man. This world pushes kitty things a lot, you know. They push cartoons and fairy tale playlands, Disney, Nickelodeon. <laughs> you know, you walk down, if you go uh, in bigger cities, you go downtown, man. You look at a lot of the logos of these so-called stores and businesses. It looks like a, a big playland, man, you know. They push this uh, kid vibration a lot, you know, and they make sure you stay in this so-called playful mind state. But the scriptures say, you know, uh, when I was a child, I did childish things. But now that I am a man, I, 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 I get away from those things. Roughly paraphrasing, you know, so it is what it is. And it says, and the sucking child shall play on the hole of the asp and a weaned child shall put his hand on the cockatrice den. This is <laughs> this is how beautiful the kingdom is going to be. A little infant could just you just let the infant go. Like Apostle Tahar always say, man, you don't you just let your infant go, man. You ain't got to worry about watching it like you, you have to do in this world, man. When you have a brand new newborn baby in this world, man, you got to make sure you're around it all the time. You got to make sure you take care of him or, or her, you know, and you got to make sure you, you know, you do what you're supposed to do so that child can grow. And be taken care of in the kingdom, man. You can take care of your children, but you can be a little bit more, you know. Uh, you can stand back a little bit more, you know, because those children are going to be in those new bodies as well, man. They're going to be able to crawl around and, and nothing is going to happen to them, man. The most high is going to protect them in the wilderness or, or whatever they at. Just let them crawl around or whatever. Let them do what they want to do. Let them have fun. You ain't going to worry about nothing because like the scriptures say, we're going to dwell in safety in the kingdom, man. Not like those fake Jews that's over there now talking about they're the real chosen people, but they're not dwelling in safety. That's letting you know that they're not the chosen people, man. We're going to dwell in safety, all right? 
and now that's like man that's a beautiful thing man you know you just let your kid go and just let him do what he want to do man and then after a while you ain't got to worry about searching for him we're gonna be in those new bodies we're gonna have spiritual power we can easily just use that to just de detect where our children are <laughs> probably teleport to them <laughs> fly to them or whatever the case may be and then you just you know play with your children do all kind of things man it's gonna be a beautiful time man let's get second peter um let's get second peter 3 and 13 and it says nevertheless we according to his promise look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that you may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. And account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, have written unto you. As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things and which some are some things hard to be understood was they that are unlearned and unstable rest as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. So at the end of the day, we're looking for new heavens and a new earth where righteousness dwell. So in order for us to get there, what we have to do, we got to be diligent. We got to be found blameless, blameless, without spot. That way we can be found in peace. We're supposed to realize after we repent, it, we repent daily, you know, because as the scriptures say, where uh our righteousness is nothing but filth, uh, filthy rags you know so we repent daily because we go off all the time so but at the end of the day we're rehearsing the righteous acts man so we can be found blameless because the most high knows who's rehearsing the righteous acts and who's not the most high knows who's sincere about this thing and who's not the ones who's going out there actually trying to wake up their people and actually fearing him and the ones that's actually just putting on the show because they they think they're a part of a thing or a group or whatever and they just want to be seen for whatever reason man you know the most i sees it man that's why you know one of the things that uh apostle rakar said he was like yeah you know you might be cool with a lot of brothers or whatever and everything like that but are they cool with the most high you know because sometimes you might not know what brothers are doing in the background man you know and this is why, you know, when we around a lot of brothers and everything like that, man, you know, we make sure all of all of them stay on point, man. You know, that's what you got to do in order to grow as a brotherhood, man. You got to, you know, be around them, speak to them, see what's going on, test them. That way you can grow as a unit because that's what we're trying to do, man. We, tr we are trying to grow as a unit. We're trying to build up the house of David, you know, because we already know that the house of David is going to inherit the kingdom of heaven. The house of David is going to start the new heavens and the new earth man so we have to be diligent we have to do what is necessary for you how about shimmy i was shot until death if that's necessary if that's your lot you know and guess what if you do that then the most high will bless you man the most High will realize your faith he's going to realize that you believe in him all the way into the end and, and guess what you're going to inherit the earth you are going to be one of those meek people man if you believe in that so you got to make sure that you keep doing what you're supposed to do so you can receive this promise because this is a promise man the most i made an oath with the our forefathers he made an oath man this is something that's taken seriously you know this is something where he was like no look i said i was gonna do this and i'm gonna do it man the most High is not a man that he shall lie all right let's get jeremiah 11 and 1 this is jeremiah chapter 11 verse 1 and it says the word that came to jeremiah from the lord saying hear ye the words of this covenant and speak unto the men of judah and to the inhabitants of jerusalem all right southern kingdom northern kingdom and say thou unto them thus said the lord power of israel cursed be the man that obeyeth not the words of this covenant which i commanded your fathers in the day that i brought them forth out of the land of egypt from the iron furnace saying obey my voice and do them according to all which i command you so shall ye be my people and i will be your power that i may perform the oath which i have which i have sworn unto your fathers to give them a land flowing with milk and honey as it is this day then answered i and said so be it o lord so at the end of the day 
This is what we want, man. We want that land flowing with milk and honey. Sweet things, man. Nothing but sweetness. That's what the king is going to be. It's going to be sweet, man. Peace. You wake up in the morning and, and you don't have to worry about anything, man. You just wake up in the morning and you going to have a, a big Kool-Aid smell on your face every single day, man. Every single day. And you're going to be happy about it, man. You're going to be looking forward to a lot of things, man. You're going to be waking up. You know, into into a in a in a bedroom that's as big as that as a museum or something. <laughs> you know, I don't know. You know, we gonna inherit everything, man. You gonna look around and see all of the precious stones and different things that's around you. You gonna wake up to your to your uh your wives, your children. You know, wake up to uh walking outside and seeing brothers enjoy themselves. You know, wake up praying to your how about shimmy I was shy. You know. All kind of things, man. This is gonna be this is gonna be wonderful, man. And this is what we are looking for, man. Because like it's, it says right here, the most high performed an oath, man. He is gonna do this, man. But before we get there, you know, we gotta go through Jacob's trouble. That's why it says be diligent and be found blameless without spot. That way, you know, when Jacob's trouble starts, you know, we can be found worthy of protection. And that's what we want. We want protection, we want to be saved. And once we be saved, this is what we receive. We receive the kingdom, man. The kingdom. All right. You get to experience your other 12 tribes, man. Or your other 11 tribes. Whatever tribe you are part of, now you get to experience the other 11. A lot of us can't even experience all of our family, man. You know, a lot of us only grew up around, you know, Judah. Or a lot of us only grew up around, you know, Issachar or Ephraim so forth and so on man a lot of us can't even experience the our other parts of the family man we have a lot of culture man we have a lot of different styles a lot of different flavors like the scriptures say we are the salt of the earth we're the salt of the earth and we can't even experience our family man we can't see the greatness and the beauty of the other tribes man you know we're going to be able to experience that in the kingdom man be around the other tribes and see how they operate see how they act see what makes them so so special and they're going to be able to see how special we are too and then all of that specialness is just going to come together and we're just going to be one spe <laughs> one special loving family man you know so that's something to look forward to man because right now man we can't even enjoy each other you know like you get around you know our people man you know you get vexed man you you, you ready to steal off them at times <laughs> You ready to curse them out or whatever the case may be. You know, it's it's horrible here, man. It's horrible. But we know uh, why we were put here. We know why we have to experience this, you know. And we understand, uh, you know, the most high to a certain extent, you know. And that's cool. We understand what he gave us as far as the scriptures go that he gave us right now, man. We understand that our minds will be fully open in the kingdom. And that's going to be another beautiful thing, man, because our brains will be operating at 144 percent man you know those new bodies are gonna be something else it's gonna be something else man let's close it with revelation chapter 21 because that whole chapter pretty much it just gives you the complete kingdom vibe you know i try to read it as quick as i possibly possibly can all right so this is revelation 21 and 1 and it says and i saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from the power out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. This is us coming down out of them chariots and the new bodies with our beauty back, man. All right. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of the Most High is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and the Most High himself shall be with them and be their power. And the Most High shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. This is a powerful scripture right here. No more tears, no more death, sorrow, crying, pain. All of those things are passed away. The things that we're experiencing right, experiencing right now will never be again. Think about that, man. You wake up right now, man. You go through all kind of things, man. You wake up, man. You, like I said, you always feel vexed. Sometimes the spirit gets your spirit gets low. This flesh gets to you, you know. 
You seeing your people die in the streets every day, man. You seeing your people on drugs. You seeing your people dumbed down in the mind. You know, this is a very horrible thing that we're seeing our people go through, man. These things are going to be passed away, meaning they will not exist, man. The Most High is going to kill these vibes of the earth right now, man. He's going to get rid of it, you know, and we know he's getting rid of it through World War Three and with the destruction of the, uh, other places around the earth. When Yahweh Shai comes back with those angels, he's going to get rid of this place, man. He's going to bring back righteousness. Righteousness started with Yahweh Shai, man. All right. Verse 5, and it says, And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Right, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. And I will be his power. He shall be my son. We're going to inherit all things, man, if we overcome. If we keep this faith until the end like we're supposed to, like the Most High told us to do, we're going to inherit all things. Like I said, we're going to take everything back that's ours, man. Everything that Esau has, we're taking that back and we're going to receive more than double, man. We're going to receive foreverness. We're going to inherit all things because the Most High's kingdom will never die. Only these heathen kingdoms fall, man. But Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah's kingdom will never die. He's going to let us inherit it. <laughs> that's, that's good, man. That's a lie, man. But the fearful and, the un and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars to have their part in a lake which burned with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. That's the nuclear destruction. And that came unto me, one of the seven angels who had the seven vows full of the seven last plagues and saw with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the lamb's wife, and recarry me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain, and show me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from the Most High, having the glory of the Most High. And her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. It had a wall, great and high, and had twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and names written there one which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Woo! On the east, three gates. On the north, three gates. On the south, three gates. And on the west, three gates. And the wall of the city had 12 foundations, and in them the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city and the gates thereof and the wall thereof. And the city lie at four square, and the length is as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with the reed, 12,000 furlong, furlong, Salakia. The length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. And he measured the wall thereof, 144 cubits, according to the measure of a man, that is, of the angel. And the building of the wall of it was of jasper, and the city was pure gold, like unto, uh, unto clear glass. Woo! And the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. The first foundation was Jasper, the second Sapphire, the third Chalcedony, the, first, the fourth an Emerald, the fifth Sardonyx, the sixth Sardius, the seventh Chrysolite, the eighth Beryl, the ninth a Topaz, the tenth a Chrysoprasas, Prasas, <laughs> so lucky if I got that wrong, the eleventh a Jacinth, the twelfth an Amethyst, and the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Every several gate was of one pearl, and the street of the city was pure gold, as it was as it were transparent glass. Oh, read that again. And the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Every several gate was of one pearl, and the street of the city was pure gold, as it were transparent glass. We're gonna have streets of gold, man. You look at this whack ass concrete that's the cement, man, <laughs> you know, it, it's horrible. It's horrible, man. This kingdom is not beautiful at all, you know? Man, we're going to have all these precious stones. Our kingdom, man, it, you know, you, uh, BG brought out that song, Bling Bling. That's exactly what this kingdom is going to be everywhere, man. Everywhere. The city is going to be lit up, man. Lit up with us living in it. We're going to be living in that litness, man. Living in that light, man. <laughs> Ooh, and I saw no temple therein, for the Lord power almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. 
and the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon to shine in it, for the glory of the Most High did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. <clears throat> Salakia, the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it, and there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. No abomination, no sin, no anything, no wickedness, no evil, you know. None of these things are going to be in the kingdom of heaven, man. Nothing but righteousness, man. Nothing but us following the commandments, statutes, and laws. You know, listening to our Lord, following the Sabbath and the new moon the correct way, following the high holy days the correct way, celebrating the new high, high holy day that's coming from the destruction of America. You know, us coming together as a people to worship Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Us coming together as a people to love each other finally. You know, us being able to actually enjoy our families, enjoy our kids, enjoy our wives, enjoy, enjoy, you know, wives enjoying their husbands. This is what we're looking for, man. And we're going to be able to do all of these things within the kingdom that's just going to be so beautiful. A kingdom that's going to look like this, man. <laughs> oh, no, not like you. <laughs> Salakia. Salakia. A kingdom that's gonna look like this. <laughs> I said, no, nah, it ain't gonna look like you. <laughs> but um, it's gonna look like this, man. Like it says, Yahweh by Shem, Yahweh Shah, Ratazah. You know? This is what we looking for, man. We looking for this, man. This is the new heavens, the new earth, the kingdom, man. So always keep this in the back of your mind, man, because this is what we fighting for, man. Cause we know that we're Israelites. We're not living like everybody else. We're not over here waiting for the fourth of July. We're not standing in line trying to get the jab. We're not trying to, you know, plan our next vacation or looking forward to our next vacation or anything like that, man. You know, we just going with the flow day by day, man, because we already know tomorrow not promised. We know we have the fear of the Lord, man. You know, we're doing everything according to his will. You know, we're making sure we stay in the spirit at all times, man, because if we do, this is what we get, man. The kingdom. So I hope this is edifying, man. So with that, I'm going to say call Halayim. Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rekakwadash. Double honors to the apostles of the great millstone, which I learned is true from. Honors to the elders and brothers out there pushing this word through the four corners of the earth within truth and sincerity. And Shalom to the Akwath that's listening and learning. And Yahweh Ratzazah, I'll be back with another lesson. Keep pushing, Yasharala. Keep pushing. We almost out of here. Shalom.